Good day to you. My name is Scott Gillette. I am the director of the Briarcliff Institute for Recovery and Development. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, a marital and family therapist, and a certified nutrient therapist for trauma, mental health, and addiction, a relatively new field. Over the last few years, our institute, which I'll call BIRD, has been conducting a study with a small group of fantastic young people that we put together, six to eight kids, who were willing to be in a study where, where they were heavy chronic marijuana users and also users of dabs and wax, the newer form of marijuana, which is highly potent, 96% and often smoking with butane rigs, tanks that are highly toxic. And we decided to test these kids to see what was going on with them because they all seem to have the same issues and the same problems. Uh, lots of anger, lots of headaches, lots of respiratory problems, lots of not being able to get launched and get off to college, lots of motivational issues, uh, lots of task oriented problems and often confusion and what I would call brain fog. So when we tested them, we did a bunch of very legitimate scientific tests. Neurotransmitter sites, we did toxicity through hair for metal toxicity and a illness called pyral disorder for zinc deficiency in vitamin B's, like vitamin B6 deficiency. And we found that our group of heavy weed users all looked the same. They all had major receptor site deficiencies, especially in GABA, serotonin, and dopamine. And they all had very high levels of metals, especially copper, a few mercury, aluminum, some lead, cadmium, and magnesium. These things really concern me. So I came up with a concept and a name which I will just call TMS, Toxic Marijuana Syndrome. We also tested groups of kids who never smoked weed. And we looked at those tests and compared them and our kids had way higher levels of toxicity. All of us are going to have some level of metal toxicity and receptor site activity that may not be 100% perfect. But the heavy weed smokers, and these kids were smoking five times a day, and the ones that were using dabs, wax, butter, oils, were highly toxic in copper. Their copper levels were through the roof. So usually when copper is high, zinc is low. There's a connection between zinc and copper. And High levels of copper can cause a lot of anger, aggression, and even some violence on occasion. So we became deeply concerned about these young people. And with the help of a fantastic nutrient company, Systemic Formulas, we began to treat them through nutrient therapy um, in what I was trained to do. Now, I am not saying that marijuana is bad. The medical marijuana can be very helpful in many situations for many things. PTSD, cancer, not being able to eat, not having an appetite, for muscular issues, fibromyalgia, many issues can be helped with medical marijuana, providing it's organic and grown cleanly. That is not always the case. Some marijuana that was tested by the Los Angeles district attorney, the attorney there, found that out of six farms, four of them had 2,000 times the level of pesticides that were allowed in the guidelines for medical marijuana. So we would like to hope that medical marijuana is a great organic thing grown by great people, but unfortunately it's not always the case. And there's a, a couple lawsuits going on now against some marijuana growers and companies because of toxicity, levels of pesticides were too high. Pesticides may create these levels of high metals. It could be the, the actual pipes, glass, lead, aluminum, titanium pipes. So 
I'm concerned about young people. This led me to write the book True Bud. And that book you can get on the site truerbud.com, which goes into much more detail about the whole issue of toxic marijuana syndrome. And health educators will be able to get this book at half price. Therapists will be able to get this book at half price to help clients. And this is a book for parents and young people to read and anyone working with young people who are heavily using marijuana. Treatment programs can help young people, but the brain chemistry has to be dealt with. A treatment program is not going to remove metal toxicity. They're not going to focus on it. And most psychotherapists and IOPs, intensive outpatient programs, don't even know what metal toxicity is and that these kids have this toxic marijuana syndrome. So I really invite you to look deeper at these issues and there's many things in the book that I feel you will find helpful. So I thank you for taking the time to listen to me. I wish you much peace in your life. And I really, really, my main goal here is for us to gain momentum in doing higher levels of testing so we could see what's going on in these young people's brains so we don't lose a generation to toxic marijuana syndrome. Thank you, and you have a joyful day.